with HTZ Communications, you have the possibility to download any cartographic maps from any uh, country. So once you have launched uh, the software, uh, here from the bottom rectangle, as you can see, you have the possibility to draw uh, the, the area of interest. And here you have an option, uh, Map Download Manager. And from these options, you will be able to download uh, different cartographic maps. Here, this is in green, this is the um, selected uh, area of interest. And then, uh, as you can see on the list, uh, so different cartographic maps are available on this area. You will be able to download um, digital cartographic maps corresponding to the digital uh, terrain elevation model, plus the clutter layer, and uh, in some cases also the building layers with a very high uh, resolution. So, for example, uh, you will get uh, the, the city uh, of uh, Lisbon in Portugal with a five meter uh, resolution. Uh, you need just to click here, and then uh, the cartographic map will be automatically uh, downloaded on your, on your PC. So, okay, so now it's downloading um, cartographic maps in uh, high resolution a city uh, in Paris. So at the end of the process, uh, the cartographic maps will be downloaded on this local folder, and then uh, you, you will be able to, to use it for your project. If you want to load it, you need just to click here, and then HTZ Communications will automatically extract the cartographic maps, create the project, and then load the project. So here this is uh, the loaded project. So as you can see, um, we have different layers here, so we can display the DTM layer. So this is the digital terrain elevation model, as you can see. So on the map layer button, you can choose the different types of display. So you can, for example, display the DTM in different uh, colors. Uh, you can also display the, the building uh, layer. So you will see the building appears here so you and you can also display the clutter layer so as you can see here the clutter layer is defined by different class of clutters mm -hmm. so each clutter is representing a class of objects which is um, described here on the clutter parameters windows so here you will find the list of the clutters the, the corresponding clutter height which is uh, impacting the coverage or prediction results. You also have the possibility to include uh, uh, penetration uh, due to the attenuation of the clutter. So, for instance, you can add uh, the attenuations of the buildings due to the walls corresponding to the forest, especially if you want to perform uh, indoor coverage. In terms of capabilities, so HTZ Communication is a multi technology tool. That means that you can modeling any kind of technologies operating from few kilohertz until 100 gigahertz. You will be able to modeling uh, on the same project uh, Tetra systems, uh, APCO 25, uh, microwave links, uh, Wi-Fi systems, 4G, 5G, radar systems, point to multipoint systems. So, for instance, if you create, so if you want to create manually or to add a station, so. We click on the map, add station. We go to takes of our rigs. And then, as you can see here, uh, on the uh, signal um, list, uh, you can choose between the different technologies. So, for example, 5G, uh, DMA, uh, Tetra, uh, Wi Fi, LoRa, 4G, and so on. So, for each technology, when you, you will get a specific tab. With, this, with the advanced parameters uh, dedicated to this technology. When I select the LTFDD, so this tab is automatically updated uh, in order to take into account uh, the, the 3GPP uh, specifications used for that technology. So as you can see, we also have the P25 uh, DMR, so you can also modeling uh, Tetrapol and public safety LTE. So if we select the signal type tetra so here this is the general tab of the of the station so here this is the nominal power the takes antenna again used by the station so for the antenna again you can go directly to the pattern tab and you can select 
the different the antenna patterns. So you can select them, for, for example, from MSI or Planet format. So on the H2Z communication directory, uh, you will find uh, an antenna uh, library okay, with a different vendor of antennas, etc. So here you have an example of list of uh, Tetra antennas from Catra. So you can select the antenna model. The antenna pattern is automatically updated. So here we can define the azimuth and the tilt of the antenna if the antenna is uh, directional. So once we have uh, uh, selected the antenna model, uh, the antenna again is automatically updated. So from here, you can define the polarization of the antenna, vertical, horizontal, and for cross polar. So the polarization would be taken into account during the interference analysis. So if we go back to the general tab, so the antenna again is automatically updated here. So this button is used to calculate the feeder loss or the cable loss. So here we need just to put the frequency. Oops, sorry. The frequency. Uh, you can select from this list uh, the feeder type, the length of the feeder. So this tool will calculate automatically the attenuations corresponding to the length, the frequency, and the feeder type. So if you click OK, as you will see, it will update automatically the feeder and the cable uh, losses. So here we have another field, another parameter, which is called takes additional loss. So this uh, field will be used uh, to take into account additional losses, like, for example, the splitters. So if you want to uh, deploy Tetra systems with two antenna panels to, to cover the highway, for example. So here, this is the frequency we also have we also have the possibility to create your own frequency plan so your list of uh, channels as you can see here on this uh, example and so you can select so here this is the frequency in uplink you can select manually uh, the frequency and you can attach this frequency plan to the station especially if you want to uh, perform an automatic frequency assignment so here this is the frequency, here this is the antenna height. So here this is the bandwidth. The bandwidth is automatically updated according to the, to the technology. Uh, here this is the call sign. So, so here you, you can define the number of channels uh, operating used by the Tetra station. So you have the possibility to define which channel is used for the pilot for the BCCH channel and which frequencies are used for the TCH for the traffic channels. So you can define the number of channels for downlink and also for uplink. Here this is the duplex spacing. And in the advanced tab, you also have additional information in terms of uh, traffic capacity. So here you also have the possibility to define the neighbor list for the Tetra stations. You can define here the handover margin. So from this window, you can customize the display. OK, so this is the station. And in the advanced tab, so from here, you can define the downlink threshold and the uplink threshold. In terms of capabilities, so with HTZ communications, you can modeling uh, the Tetra stations or the Wi-Fi uh, stations. You can perform the coverage calculations and the coverage analysis based on the surface covered or based on the population covered. Um, HTZ communications include a set of features for the automatic network design. So you can use the tool to design from scratch your network in order to cover a specific area. Uh, the tool includes automatic um, uh, site selection, so you can also import a list of candidates and the communications will uh, automatically select the best stations in order to reduce the number of sites in order to cover a given uh, area. Automatic features for the optimizations in order to, to, to optimize the power, uh, to optimize the azimuth, uh, the tilt, if you are using uh, Tetra systems with the directional antennas. So it also includes uh, automatic frequency assignment, uh, interference analysis uh, features used for the interference analysis and for all the out of band interference, like the intermodulation products, for instance. It also includes uh, dedicated menu for the traffic 
dimensioning and the traffic analysis. Uh, in terms of Erlang for the voice or in terms of data, it's also including a, a complete menu for the handover uh, calculation. So you can uh, calculate uh, the neighbor list uh, between the cells. So I will I will continue the, the scenario. Uh, one more thing, uh, you also have with HTZ communications the possibility to use an automatic uh, link budget calculator. So balance set path threshold to ensure that the link budget is uh, balanced and dash to z communications so for the propagation model so dash to z communication is one of the most complete tool in terms of number of propagation models because it's able to support all the frequencies from few kilohertz until 100 gigahertz so let's talk about the tetra and the wi-fi but we mainly have two families of propagation models the empirical models like as you know the Kumura ATA, the COS 231 models. But what we recommend to use is deterministic propagation models. HTZ communications include a full deterministic propagation models that can be used even without pre calibration of the propagation model. All the equations used by these deterministic propagation models will only depend on the characteristics of the cartographic maps. For the Tetra and Wi-Fi, we would suggest to use this full deterministic propagation model. I prepared a, a scenario it's for a highway. So as you can see here in green, you can see the highway uh, line. So this is a project with a 20 meter uh, resolution. So we can display the map, the clutter uh, layer. So here in green, you can see the highway. And in fact, when I move the cursor, if you look at here, if you look at on the on the right corner, the clutter code corresponding to that point. So here, as you can see, the clutter code is number 10 for the for the highway, and we have the corresponding uh, longitude, latitude, and the altitude um, above the sea level. As uh, as explained before, so you can create manually the stations. So you have the, the possibility to import the stations from different external formats, CSV, ASCII, access uh, file. And one more thing, so with HTZ communications, you have the possibility also to draw vector lines or to draw uh, polygons. So here, for example, as you can see I can draw manually a polygon. And in fact, this polygon can be used for instance, for the automatic network design, so you can draw the area of interest, and then uh, you can perform an automatic network design to cover this particular polygon. Or you can use this polygon for, for the optimizations of the cluster. You can use this polygon for the automatic optimization in order to improve uh, the, the quality of service inside uh, the polygon, so uh, vector lines. Uh, uh, or you have the possibility, of course, to import directly the vectors from different uh, formats. It could be SHP format, it can be Google uh, Earth, uh, it can be from MapInfo, uh, BigSafe, and so on. You also have uh, okay, the possibility to calculate uh, the coverage threshold based on the probability of coverage at the cell edge. If we want to take into account the probability of coverage of 95%, uh, for example. So here, the coverage threshold corresponding to this probability of coverage is displayed here. So here on this example, for example, I will load some Tetra candidates. So each station here is using this um, configuration. So we are using here our omnidirectional antenna with a 7.8, uh, 7.1 uh, dBi antenna again. So we already calculated the coverage of the station here. So here, this is this is the coverage. So if you move the cursor, you can see the power received from here on the on the right corner. Uh, you can display also a profile view between a transmitter and a receiving point. Uh, 
Okay, so you can display the profile uh, between the transmitter and the receiving point. So here this is the ellipsoidal frame in green. The green curve is the power received at the different uh, location of the of the profile. And here on the lower um, right corner, this is the power received at this uh, this location. Um, so you can also display uh, so you can display the, the coverage, you can display the best server, the best server area. The best server area. Uh, you can also, sorry, from here, you can also display the overlapping area between, um, between the stations. So the pink color means that at uh, this point, uh, the receiver will be able to, to receive that list two uh, different signals from two different uh, base stations. Uh, from here, you can also display the number of channels uh, received at each uh, location. Uh, so it's uh, here, so it will give you the number of channels depending on the overlapping. So here on this example, for example, we have a list of candidates. So suppose you would like to select automatically the best site in order to cover this um, this vector line. So here we have a menu, station candidates, select stations according to coverage objective. So here's the clutter code used for the for the highway is the clutter code 10. So I will use, I will ask to select the best site candidates only to cover, in order to cover only the clutter code 10, which is the, the highway uh, cut clutter, uh, let's say with objective of coverage of 95%, and then HZ communication will automatically select the best candidates in order to reduce the number of sites and, uh, and to cover this, uh, this area. So, um, so here we ask it to cover 95% of the railway. So at the end, uh, as you can see, we only have one, two, th three, four, five activated stations. So only five stations will be uh, required to cover the vector line. Uh, from here, we can calculate what is the percentage of surface covered for the, for the railway. So I will click here. So here, as we can see, 95% of the right of the highway is is covered with only five stations. Uh, there is another, there is other functions for the automatic optimizations. So there is other options to optimize. For example, if you are using panel antennas for for for, for tetras, so you have also other automatic uh, functions. For example, to select the best antenna models, to select the best tilt the best antenna height or the best uh, power in order to, to cover uh, the area. So if we have some gap of coverage along the vector line, there is a, a function vector line not covered. So with these functions, we can zoom in directly on the area not covered. And then we can jump to the different points of the vectors. Not, not correct. Um, you also have the possibility to uh, create the portables. So suppose we would like to um, modeling a user equipment with the two the antenna heights. You can put the power. You can select the the antenna uh, uh, pattern here. You can define the mean sensitivity. You can add uh, other informations like the traffic demand in Erlang and so on. So I, I already generated a, a population of portable along uh, the vector lines, uh, and I will use it, for example, for the automatic network design. So the subscribers, I will remove all the existing stations. So here, as you can see, we have different points. And each pointer is corresponding to one user equipment. So if you click here on subscriber parameters, 
So here, for example, I have generated here uh, a portable with five uh, power uh, antenna height and with a specific sensitivity in terms of uh, dynamic threshold and with antenna height. Here, there is a function uh, in subscriber. For example, search sizing. Uh, we consider the frequency of the uh, of the base stations, uh, the radiated power, the ERP of the base uh, stations, and the average height. And here, from here, you can also define uh, the the downing uh, coverage. It's up to you. And you can ask, for example, then um, to find the best locations, but only on the right uh, clutter. At the end of the calculations, we will get something like that. So here this is, so the functions used for the automatic network design is called prospective planning. Maybe I will show it to you. So I will select, so here you see, in fact, I have created two separate databases for the, for, for the user, one for the Tetra and another one for the Wi-Fi. Okay. So I will select now the, the list of user equipments for the Tetra. I will select all of them. I will put them orphan. So orphan in, uh, in HTZ communications means no, uh, not connected. So as you can see here on the screen, now the user equipment are displaying pink color, which means that they are not yet connected to any base station. So then I will ask to deploy the base stations uh, in priority in the right uh, clutter. Here this is the maximum number of sites to deploy. So if you put uh, 10, it doesn't mean that it will deploy 10, but the maximum number will be uh, 10 stations. And here we, we will define the technical parameters. I will use a tetra site with a 24 uh, meter antenna height so with a 40 uh, watts the power and with omnidirectional antenna by default. But of course, we can also use um, sites with a two uh, directional antennas instead of one omnidirectional antenna. So you can configure the stations with the omnidirectional antenna or with the several sector antennas. And I will ask to deploy the stations, but we have to make sure that the downlink and the uplink uh, will be achieved. So if I run the calculation. So first of all, HTZ communications will calculate the uplink coverage. And then it will uh, try to um, find the, the best uh, locations for the Tetra base stations, in order, of course, to limit the number of, uh, of sites. So here, uh, the feature has deployed 10 sites. The limited number of stations was 10. So with the 10, stations, the maximum of, of uh, user equipment connected is 19% of the user equipment. Okay. Um, so here we have the new 10 stations created automatically. So if we perform the coverage calculation, So here, the threshold was minus 86 dBm. Uh, so at this stage, uh, if we want to calculate what is the surface coverage along the, the vector line, okay. uh, so as we can see here, with this number of stations, 98% of the vector load is, uh, is covered by the 10 stations. So if you want to uh, increase target coverage, so in that case, uh, you need just to restart the calculations, but with a, a higher number of uh, maximum site to deploy. Suppose we are using a directional antenna instead of omnidirectional antenna. 
what we have to do, in fact, is to duplicate the stations. So we, we duplicate the stations in order to consider two sector by station. So I will add another sector. Now, as you will see, you will find two sectors on the same site. I already created Tetra stations using bidirectional antennas. So as you can see here, now we have two sectors by size with a directive antenna. And we added the three uh, dB uh, losses uh, to take into account the two combining antennas, so to take into account the, the, the splitter. So you also have an option here to optimize automatically the azimut in order to cover the vector um, the vector line. So this function is here, network planning, station optimize azimut on vector line. So now the, the azimut are already opt optimized, but with this function, HZ communications will automatically calculate the best azimut in order to, to improve uh, the coverage along uh, the, the vector line. Okay, so, so the azimut now are automatically uh, updated. So I will disable the user equipment. And I don't know if you can see it, but here we can see the azimut and the horizontal pattern. And if we go to the pattern tab, as you can see, the azimut is automatically updated by HTZ Communications. So now, f finally, we can restart the coverage of the network after this uh, optimization. Final coverage result. So we can also display the best server area. So here we can see the best server corresponding to the different sectors. 